Hey there, let's talk about the improved hoverbike. The hoverbike is a vehicle found in the game called Starbound, made by Chucklefish. Starbound is a 2D pixel game, and we try to recreate everything as close to the game possible in Second Life. And the same goes for the hoverbike. When you purchase your hoverbike, all you will get is a pod. You attach it, and it will appear on your HUD. You can edit this pod, move it around on the screen wherever you want, wherever you feel it takes up as minimal space as possible. And once you click the pod, it will open up, and it will summon your hoverbike. Closing the pod will dismiss the vehicle. Just like in Starbound, if you drive around long enough in your vehicle, it will eventually get damaged. The hoverbike will have three damage states, and then it explodes. This is damage state one, having driven quite a little bit, and bumped into everything that I could. In the previous version of the hoverbike, on Second Life, damaging your vehicle meant the damage would last. Even when you dismiss your vehicle, and res it out again, it would remain damaged. And now, whenever your vehicle is completely broken, or whenever your vehicle is damaged, it will automatically heal itself. To repair your vehicle, you had to visit Rob Perro, just like in Starbound. Rob Perro still has a function, though. Just like in Starbound, when purchasing your hoverbike, you have a choice of three colors. The khaki yellow that I just showed, the green, and the red. So let's take a look. We first make sure the pod is closed, and we click on Rob Repero. And of course we have to move closer. Oh god. There we go. Perfect. When opening up the menu at Rob Repero, you have the choice between, well, a lot of colors. Here we have the cocky yellow, we have green, we have red, and you even have a second page. Cyan, white, Grey, black, white of Ollie, and black of Ollie. You can even submit your own custom UUID. And of course, the um, UV map and a default texture is supplied in the product should you want to change the colors or add prints to it yourself. Just clicking on it will require the key. You just upload the texture, copy and paste the UUID of the texture in there, and it will all work out. For the sake of showing how things work, I'll just click on green. That's my favorite color. Click on submit. And we'll see the pod change color. And let's take a look. Perfect. Here we are at a nice little sandbox. It's a little bit small, but I think it will manage for the display of the hoverbike. Now before we do anything, we of course have to res out our hoverbike. And you can go sit in it. You will notice a little dashboard HUD will pop up. This dashboard HUD allows you to uh, control the vehicle from third person view. If you go to mouse look or first person view, you will notice the dashboard vanishes. It's because you can't click it, but also because everything that you need is right here. You have your ignition key, your light, uh, and you have your shift. So going back to third person, which is the easiest way to control this car, the least fun, but the easiest, um, we have to start the hover car to be able to do anything. So click the ignition, and yeah, there we go, it started. However, I'm still not able to move at all. That's because we're in neutral. Now you don't have to have a driver's license in order to drive this, but neutral just means that you're not able to move at all. So let's kick it up in first gear. There we go. First gear is rather slow, and you can see the accelerometer down here. It's rather slow, but it has a lot of control. This is lovely for when you're driving around in a little city or a town. Pretty much a place with tight spots. If you want to have a little bit more speed, you can go in second gear. Second gear allows you to have more speed at the sacrifice of a little bit of control. There we go, the accelerometer is able to even fully max out, but our control is um, a little bit affected by it. But if you do some practice, you can still get around tight corners uh, with a uh, nice amount of speed. Now, if you want to go completely boss to the wall, you will enter third gear. Third gear completely gets rid of all special control features. There is no damping, um, the only thing that is stopping you is friction, but you just go. 
and you will keep going. So if I were to stop doing anything right now, you can see I'm still gliding. Still quite at the same speed. The only time I actually do slow down is because of bumping on the ground and such not and whatnot. Okay. This is my favorite gear by far. Because what you can do on this is get on ramps. And do some cool flips and whatnot. <laughs> Sadly, I don't have a lot of space here, else I could show you some uh, some cool tricks. It's kind of something you have to get used to at first, but when you're used to it, you can do a lot of nice stuff. You are able to tip your hover bike backwards by pressing crouch, or C, or page down, whatever the key is for you. This is lovely to get up on ramps. However, we are not able to tip forward. We replace that feature by adding a jump, that is the E key, or the page up, or whatever else you use for jump. Perfect. So, uh, yeah, if you go up a ramp, I would suggest to always lean back to lose as little momentum as possible. And of course the jump is going to be lovely to uh, get up on places that you normally can get up to. Ah! Oh, whoops. That was a little bit too hard of a bump. Well, that segues in lovely to our uh, next topic. As I mentioned before, or may have mentioned before, I'm not sure how much I cut from this video, um, your hoverbike is able to take damage, and you can see a little bit of wear and tear. The windshield is broken, and uh, there's some uh, paint missing here and there. Whenever you damage your vehicle, it's no problem. You can fix it easily by re-resing the vehicle, but it just adds some, uh, some nice little feature, some roleplay element to the whole hoverbike. All right, that did it. All right, we got to the point where the uh, engine starts failing. Oh, and there we get to the next stage. And the ballasts fell off, or whatever these things are. Well, we don't need those anyway. It's really trying to, oh, never mind. There we go. It, uh, it broke. This one won't go anywhere. <laughs> of course, what to do now? You just dismiss it and res a new one. Perfect. Another neat little feature is the radio. The radio used to have just one song and you click it to turn it on or off, but now you are able to um, add your own music to it. Here you see a few note cards and there's very simple note card form um, music players. When you click on it, it will bring up the uh, the radio and then you can go through the list of tracks and if you find one that you like I'll just put it on track number one it'll start loading you hear the static sound there we go and the music is playing you can uh, have music while you're driving uh, and if you wish to change the channel you can always just go click the forward or back button that was it for the other bike. Go, uh, go try it out. Go feel for yourself. It's a lovely vehicle to drive, and it's much fun, especially going into a crash derby with your friends. So yeah, thank you for watching, and I hope I covered everything here. Um, at the sacrifice of a little bit of control, but you still have some control here and there. And that is the server. Oh god, this sim is not the greatest. As you can see, I'm maxing out the velocity gauge over there. If the sim would not poop, there we go. Alright, never mind. Fuck this shit. No, no, no. Bullshit. Ugh. <sighs>